it's that time of week once more for Muji and Dan to give you the comic store. It's time to open up those bags and boards, fans. Welcome to Get Your Pull. Hello, welcome to Get Your Pulls, number 100, the big spectacular. We made it. It took us a long time, but we finally reached episode 100 amidst many delays and personal schedule conflicts and Muji falling asleep one time, that happened. <laughs> yeah, one time back. I simply fell asleep. <laughs> that was the conflict because I was tired and I didn't wake back up. So that night me, Jeremy, and Todd just sat around and drank beers and talked about comic books. So it, it was still a good yeah, night. But I had no complaints. We were just friends that night. <laughs> That's, That's right. Nice. <laughs> Bro's hanging out. So we have a new guest on the show this week for the 100th episode spectacular. Um, he's going to be covering one of the recent events in comics that none of us were had any involvement in, but we thought really needed to be addressed here on the show. Of course, the death of Wolverine. That's one of the hottest topics in all of comics. Jeremy Stewart, one of my dear friends going back many, many years, a uh, brother in geekdom, he introduced me to a lot of cool, nerdy shit back in the high school days. Uh, he's one of my former bandmates, just an all-around swell guy, and a smart guy. So we hope you enjoy having him here on the show. Good to be here, guys. Who was your first good friend that wasn't me? My first good friend that wasn't you? Your first kind of best, like your first stand-in best friend that wasn't me. Jeremy? Yeah, yeah. I'd say so, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> heart, man. Absolutely. <laughs> Blow it up. <laughs> I still haven't forgiven you. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a little horse. I did an all day wrestling convention and then a, a live eye pay per view and all this that I didn't expect. So I was like talking for 11 hours. So I'm glad we have Todd Johnson back on the show, of course, oh, yeah. and our grand host, Muji. Uh, that way I don't have to talk nearly as much. <laughs> we can fill the gaps for you. Well, yeah, we'll start out. Uh, I guess we'll talk about some news. There's been like a thousand movies announced since um, the last time we podcast. Apparently by this time in like two years, there's going to be a comic book TV show on every single night. Yikes. There's going to be comic book Netflix shows coming out like every three months. And there's going to be, it looks like a movie once a month, which is going to be cool for a minute. And eventually <laughs> people are going to really stop caring. But I don't think they're going to stop caring about the ones that got announced so far because there were a bunch of badass ones. Oh, DC started yeah. out. And they announced a shit ton of movies. They really did. <laughs> They're not like, starting out slow. They're like, we're going to put out like three or four years for the next five years, so deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> and it looks awesome. They're doing Batman vs. Superman that we all know that for some reason doesn't also say versus Wonder Woman since apparently she's in like the whole thing too, but whatever. <laughs> she's around. Mm. She's yes. not in conflict, I guess. I and know. then Suicide Squad, which that's badass because they cast the Joker for it, so... At first, when they were like, Suicide Squad's the second movie, I was like, that's a little weird. I get it, because Harley Quinn's in it, so people like Harley yeah. Quinn. But as soon as they cast the Joker, I was like, oh, yeah, he's as popular as Batman. I was like, there were more people wearing, you couldn't go to a Halloween party for like three years yeah, after yeah. The Dark Knight without seeing 35,000 Jokers. Oh, yeah. So we play a game at Dragon Con that's count the <laughs> shitty Jokers, and it <laughs> usually gets into double digits every year. So they're going to be able to make a movie with a Joker in it that they don't even have to put Batman in. That's a genius. That's going to make a shit ton of money. What do you think? What do you guys think about the casting uh, rumors for the Joker? I think it's a really good choice. Jared Leto is really good. So. I have not heard of any of the rumors yet. It's so Jared Leto is the Joker yeah. and um, Margot Robbie. I don't know if you saw Wolf of Wall Street. I no. The I very did. beautiful blonde girl that's a yes. Leo's woman in the Wolf of okay. Wall Street. Um, she is... Right now, they said it's rumor. Like I read on Yahoo, she was cast as Harley Quinn. So yes, Jared Leto is not confirmed. He is just like the rumored studio choice. But um, that, that they're really going after. Been. They're really going after people for these movies. Like they're not fucking around with with small time in it. They're really going yeah. after some aggressive like, casting. Yeah. Interesting thing that they announced a flag. Okay, so then they're announcing a Flash movie, and and it's weird that they're not 
you doing anything with the TV, but I think that absolutely confirms that in the Suicide Squad that had happened in Arrow, that, you know, yeah. they're not going to be any crossover between the DC and television and movie universes. Yeah, no overlap. Different teams, different actors. Yeah. It's always been something. I guess the only slight possibility would be Gotham. I guess they could, since it's not really in yeah. the universe of the rest, and it's in the past anyways. But it would also still probably be weird if... They tried to overlap Gotham because, like, the yeah. Riddler's, like, in his 20s already. Oh, right. and, you know, they would really have to... Much older than Batman. Yeah, they really did some, like, they really did some, like, age jumps for Gotham where there's, like, a lot of people, when you look at Bruce, and you're like, if in, like, 20 years he's Batman, yeah. and some of these people will be, like, old as fuck by then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like the Joker would be walking with a cane if he's already, like, walking around <laughs> being the Joker. So, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, they Marvel haven't introduced him yet. I hope not. Officially. I hope not. I was talking to somebody the other day. I was like, a lot of people want to see the Joker on there. And I'm like, they should hold him off for years. Like, they should yeah. have, like, they should have, like, a bank get robbed or something and let you see, like, the glimpse of the Red Hood. Yeah, they got and, the then, just, yeah. and then you just don't see anything more about the Joker until, like, way into the next season. I'd be satisfied with that. Totally. And if he becomes the Joker while Bruce Wayne's a kid, that's really going to like... Now, I'm going to have some nerd rage. I'm going to say I don't get it much. It takes the wind out of the sails. Despite all... Okay. Despite my many numerous nerdy like nerdy hobbies, I don't get nerd rage very often. <laughs> like, I don't... Just stuff, I just stuff... I just don't care about it. Like, you know, it's like, oh, Superman was not as nice in the movie. I didn't care. Yeah. Like, most of that stuff I don't care about. Thing. But if Batman is 12 and the Joker's got the paint on, I'm going to be a little ticked. Yeah. I don't think you'll be the only one. I think you'll be in line for that. Hopefully they respect that fan line where it's like, well, Batman has to have a hand in him turning into Yeah. I love the New 52 way where they just confirmed, like, they bridged the gap between the old two where he is the Red Hood and then he dropped him to the bat like he did in the movie. And it was like, yeah, that was awesome. I like that nod to the 89. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. People, there's a real, there's a real movement to shit on the '89 movie now, but fuck all those people. Yeah, it's still, still great. Awesome. It's a classic movie. You can't. It looks like it came out in '89, but it's great. Star Wars I, it looks was, like it came out in '77. It it's holds great. up. They just put it out on Netflix. Thanks, yeah, Todd, for the Iggy that day. I I'm saw always, it on Facebook. For it. <laughs> like, I woke up. I was taking a shit at like 7:30 <laughs> in the morning on a Saturday. And I see Todd's Facebook status, Batman 89 is on Netflix. I was like, okay, <laughs> well, I'm wiping and I'm going to watch it now. Well, <laughs> like, it's, well, on top of that. And it's weird how lazy we all are, because it's not like everyone doesn't own it. But you're like, I yeah. can press a button and watch it instead of putting it in. Yeah, <laughs> go, go watch I, I guess I have to do it. <laughs> Uh, so the Marvel, you know, they countered right back at DC. They had their big movie announcements. It wasn't two weeks later that Marvel had the huge Phase Three announcement that blew up the internet. Um, definitely look up the Vince McMahon meme about that with the facial expressions, and that's pretty accurate in terms of uh, how we all felt about it. I think. Oh yeah, they announced a ton of movies. Get you psyched up. Announced two Avengers movies, a two-parter. They're going the Twilight route. No. <laughs> Basically, just so they can like make the people do two movies, because apparently all the actors their contracts up with the next Avengers. Yeah. But now they're shooting it all at once, so it's like, psych, if you're doing two of them. Hey, sorry, <laughs> you, you didn't know it, but you're doing two of them. You're doing one really long one, and we get to sell it twice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's about right. It's like people That's do it for. They're like people do it for Peter Jackson all the time. Like, oh, you're right. We know. <laughs> oh yeah, and the Harry Potter movies. The last yeah. Harry Potter movie was a two-parter. It's so. a big thing now. You got the Hunger Games, the third one. It's split up. It's just the money grab. So you get. It's like you. Can, it's like back in the theater. Why don't you call it part three? <laughs> In part four, I don't know. You just call it part three, part one, part two. That's yeah. really weird to me. But <laughs> that's the I mean, essentially what DC's doing. I mean, Justice League is almost this is like Justice the Justice League preview and then the Justice League movie. So, yeah, but yeah they got what well, we got Black Panther. So we're gonna be traveling to Wakanda. Um, now like I trust Wakanda. them because of Thor and all that. Like I do trust them that they're gonna like have make the villains all cool. But they're really gonna get thin on villains soon that like are awesome. Because yeah. they really don't own most of their good villains. Well, right. we'll see how this Fantastic Four movie does. And they might have Doctor Doom back yeah. in the fold before long. Yeah, even for yeah. horrible. Yeah, this movie. When Doc, yeah, when Doctor Doom <laughs> the turns out, Doom. 
I haven't even, dude, I, have, I haven't even seen him yet. I've just assumed that all the announcements of this movie that Doctor Doom's going to be like a fucking frog, like a sentient frog. Yeah. Like, We're taking it in a new direction. No costumes, frog Doctor Doom. <laughs> they really see Sasquatch pictures of Doom, and it was, I guess they're trying to do like the flesh armor from the mystical, like, uh, Mark Wade run, but it just looks like he's covered in human feces. <laughs> I would oh love, dude, I would love for them to get Fantastic Four back. I would love for them to get Spider Man back. I don't want them to get X Men back because I like the X Men universe the way that it yeah, is. Yeah, they, they're handling it a lot better than the other. Yeah, well, the Spider Man also is is allegedly a lot closer to reality, or at least they're closer to striking some kind of deal yeah. where that they're going to let Marvel use him again and just get paid big, and they can still try to do their shitty Aunt May prequel. <laughs> Man, I still hope that's a joke. What are they gonna do? Dude, for that's an gotta be. Movie? Well, dude, I heard they're doing. I heard they're doing the female Spider. Like, I heard they're gonna do like a, They're gonna do like a Spider Man like team up, but it's like a yeah. bunch of female Spider Men. Like, I mean, what? That's kind of where the comics going right now, but uh, the Spider Verse. We'll yeah, all this shit just really makes me mad that they tried to lowball Tobey Maguire. Because part four was going to be so awesome. Yeah, and you didn't get to I, I would still stand by Toby over Garfield. He's a better Peter Parker. He's not like Dreamboat Peter. Like Peter yeah. Parker's not supposed. Yeah. Like that was the very first thing. Like the first movie was decent. There were parts of yeah, it that I, I really liked. liked the first and the second one. movie was also like they wrote the character of like Peter Parker good. But in the first yeah. movie, I'm immediately out of it because I'm like he's skateboarding around school and you're like, oh cool. no, oh nobody likes that kid. Fucking really, like nobody like oh all the girls don't love that kid. Like come I, on, I can get rid. Yeah, yeah give me a break. It's be awkward, not just like, oh, they just don't understand me, but I'm still cool. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he was just a dreamy, you know. Like, I was like, oh, man, everybody thought he was cool. Like, he was like the first kid in his class to lose his virginity. Like, you know he was. Like, that was not the Peter Parker that I know. Shoot, but, um, yeah. People. That was happening. <laughs> but anyways, I could bitch for an hour about those movies but yeah. we get back to the cool stuff that's happening um, Marvel Studios proper <laughs> yes exactly um, we got uh, what else do we have we got more Guardians of course which have been previously announced but now so, officially announced we got another Thor movie which wasn't a guarantee but now we know we're at least getting one more so that's awesome yeah. And then yeah Cap Civil War like, which I mean that's basically going to be Avengers two and a half I think it's a like, response I- to the Batman v Superman it's like oh well now it's Iron Man v. Cap. And, it's from, and, same and, it's, and it also makes you think that, remember when they announced Batman vs. Superman, they announced it for the same date as Cap, and they're yeah. like, we're not moving off of it. Do you <laughs> think they got wind of it was going to be Civil War, and they're like, I guess we're going to move, because fucking yeah. Iron Man is the most popular dude there is right now, so we're not going to fuck with that. Call Downey Jr., we got to get this together. Because <laughs> I remember when they said, because I guess it means there's not going to be another Iron Man, because I remember they said they signed Downey for two more movies, and yeah. I guess those are the two. It's going to be that, and then the two-part... Because he said he was in talks for another one or negotiation. Yeah. So but that, might that looks like that yeah. maybe be it and said, yeah. Which I'd be fine with. I mean, and if they're smart, they can still maximize him, and I think they will. They'll probably film some cameos of him for other things to plug in while he's yeah. on set. So, you know, they can maybe film it him. It feels like they're doing, like, a bunch of things. Like, it feels like they're, A, planning for when they're not going to have all these guys because they have in line the option. Because I thought they may do Bucky Cap, but now I'm thinking they may do – because of the comic, Falcon Cap instead. Yeah. Um, they're really set up for like a Bucky and um, Black Widow team up if they want to do that. That's something they could do in the future. And they could have War Machine step in for yeah. Dan Jr. easily. I mean, they got Cheetle and yeah. Avengers too. And so. they don't even really have to do more like Iron Man, Iron Man movies. They can also, if they just want to downy in the smallest of roles, do the, you know, the uh, Tony Stark director of Shield Angle, yeah, that where be- he just comes in for a minute and like that in the small role in the movie. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah he's already yeah. expressed his interest in trying to help out with the TV show and, and get do a cameo there. Yeah. And I think that that's where I kind of got the idea that they'll probably just film that while he's on set for one of these movies and just plug it in there. But that's cool. Which I guess he really might just be the director of Shield before that cat movie. You never know, because yeah. I mean that will make that's, more sense for the like story if they're going more more with the comic. But those are all awesome, um, and then they also announced Captain Marvel. We go with Carol Danvers. Some more space stuff because they like to do that. Yeah, but they got to be upset that DC beat them to the punch, huh? Yeah, 
Yeah, they're going to be upset that DC beat them to the punch. Uh, you know, Wonder Woman's coming out the year before. Marvel really prides itself on, you know, being the most diverse comic book company there is, which isn't true. No, they love to beat DC over the head on top of that high horse that, you know, DC is so sexist. <laughs> We're less sexist. But, yeah. Like, they're still all owned by major corporations, so it's like, yeah. they're not... Yeah, and you've only put out ten movies or something, but you haven't had a chick led movie yet. You haven't even tried. And you waited to announce until after Wonder Woman. Image is the real diverse place. Marvel is like the assholes that sell organic chicken in Walmart. Good one, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that joke... Joke's new. But. <laughs> it went over really well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, I, and Marvel does. They, 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 of course, with the female Thor and the Black Captain America, and all that's well and good, um, uh, other than they try to guilt you into if you don't support yeah. it. Like it, it, It's like, yeah. I didn't have any qualms with it, and yeah. I was just, just mad because I was going to have to buy 50 tie-in issues. That's yeah. why I dropped their, the book. Their whole, their whole campaign was like... Yeah, their whole campaign was like, if you don't like Black Cap and Female Thor, like, if you don't, if you drop this book, first of all, then you're obviously a racist or a sexist. <laughs> I mean, if you were reading Superman and all of a sudden they made, you know, Jimmy Superman and you dropped it, that would be fine. But how dare you? If you drop this book because we made a Female Thor, then you're an asshole. And then they're like, these aren't gimmicks. They're not gimmicks. We're going to announce it on The View, but it's not a gimmick. Like, that's, you know, it's like. Yeah, they were totally like, it's just, it's the natural progression of the story, and we're going to show that natural progression by talking to Barbara Walters on a TV show for women, but it's not a gimmick. All that aside, still excited for the Captain Marvel movie, absolutely, you know. Yeah, oh yeah, Kelly do the Conics run, I got the first two trades of that, it's been really awesome with Captain Marvel, and that's really what it's based off of, so... That should be pretty great. It's got Doctor Strange coming with the Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes, the badge. That. That. Jeremy's a big fan of the Cumberbatch. He could look at a pile of crap and turn it to gold, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's good. He's getting to play all the, all the famous people. So good for him. Yeah, it's, a, it's an intriguing choice. There were a lot of cool casting announcements, you know, rumored for Doctor Strange. Joaquin Phoenix was one. I thought that would have been awesome, yeah, too. I thought it would have been great. But I'm totally down with Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, yeah he, he's, he's the right person. guy. He's hot right now. He's, he's the right choice. Yeah. He's, he's, I wonder if he'll do an accent or if he'll be like a British Doctor Strange. He just do the Sherlock accent. Right? Yeah. I'm not going. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He just has to play Sherlock. Yeah. I'd be fine with it. It'd be I awesome. Sherlock and Superhero. <laughs> Doctor Sherman. Yeah. Doctor Sherman. <laughs> Those are all exciting. And then, well, Star Wars got a title, right? That happened while we were gone. Yes. The Force Awakens. Force Awakens. Yeah. And as Kevin Smith added, <laughs> then tries not to wake up his wife while he rubs one out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty great. No, nothing can be worse than the Phantom Menace, so I think. Dodged a small bullet. Oh, the Force Awakens <laughs> is pretty cool. I mean, That's it sounds fun. like a video game title more yeah, than a movie necessarily, <laughs> but I'm not against it. I, I think, you know, if, if that implies that we're going to have like heavy force usage and fucking yeah. awesome. Well, I heard that, like, did money. you hear like the rumored like plot for the movie? The rumored plot, non, no spoilers, but the rumored plot just kind of because I'm sure once you see one preview, this will all be told. Yeah, yeah. Probably even more. You could probably figure out the end of the movie by the preview because that's how those go now. But apparently, the rumor plot is that like soon after episode six, Luke just decides the force is too strong with him, so he oh, goes I- he goes Obi Wan style and becomes a hermit. And nobody can find him. He disappears for like twenty years or thirty cool. years or whatever. I know Hamill's been wearing a beard lately. So. Yeah, and then so he's just off on his own because he's getting too strong. And apparently, at a certain point, he like can't control it. So, like, he's, like, sitting there and shit's, like, levitating and stuff. Like, it's yeah. just the force is too strong. That's kind of cool. But then somebody's got to come find him because, of course, they need his help again <laughs> because, of course, the dark side's coming back and they need the strongest Jedi ever to help. That sounds fucking awesome. I hope that happens. It sounds pretty cool. So, yeah. I just hope that, um, let's hope that Carrie Fisher is cool in it. She's the one I'm most afraid of. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's certainly, uh, with the aging of the characters, uh, with the actors, I mean, I guess it's taking place about as many years in the future in real 
real life as, yeah. um, as they did. So, I mean, the aging, I guess, is appropriate. Of course, Carrie Fisher's yeah. had a bit of a harder life, so has aged a little little more than the others. But, um, you know, always was a good actress. I think for the money, hopefully she'll pull it together and, yeah, yeah. and you know, overcome any personal obstacles she might have and, and yeah. deliver. You and know. then also Mark Hamill kind of just looks like the mask. Yeah. So <laughs> his face is all plastic surgery now, but... Special effects, my friend. They can do it together. I mean, Harrison Ford looks like a grandpa now. I never thought yeah. I'd say that. But, but he's like know, legit, he's like eighty. Like he's Johnson like seventy something yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, he was been like, doing the most work. Of, he like, was already old. old. He was already he's like still he was already like fifty in the Last Crusade. He just mm-hmm. got started late. Like he was already like mid thirties when he got Han Solo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's had a full head of hair, so you can he's tell. Baby face. I am exactly. excited for the Star Wars. I mean, yeah. like all of the real hardcore Star Wars fans that are. The cool kids in like Hollywood and comics and whatever that have gotten to go visit the set really are excited. They're they're using CGI, but they're relying a lot on the original movie effects of um, animatronics and stuff like that, which yeah. I think yeah. is very cool. It, they, they're saying that it's going to feel like the original trilogy more than anything that's been tried to replicate it since then. It, it a looks like it's going to be badass, and B. I'm just wondering how they're going to work people in. Like you know. Darth Vader, I bet. I mean, he's going to be in it. Do you think that like Luke made us hear the voice of Vader or something? Because I've I've heard I've, like yeah. they've said like they've seen fucking James Earl Jones hanging around or a flashback sequence would be in order too. That's true. I, it would be, be awesome, awesome to see Vader on screen. Yeah. Oh my god, it would be great. Well, I mean, they've already tickled that dick a little bit. I mean, little bit. If, if you're watching <laughs> the Star Wars animated series, the follow up to the Clone Wars. Yeah. Um, what the fuck is it called? Rebels. Rebels. Star Wars Rebels on Disney XD, and it's fucking awesome. I've heard good things about um, it. It's just as good as the Clone Wars so far, in my opinion, but it takes place before the original trilogy, in between the two trilogies. So it's got the rise of Darth Vader, and they actually did a TV movie on ABC where they aired the first two episodes, yeah. and they recut James Earl Jones into that with a Darth Vader scene where he's That's actually awesome. in it, and there's rumors that he's coming back. So, man, that's got me fucking excited. Do you think this oh, yeah. is just all one big ploy by Lucas? Do you think that the recut is going to be Luke's going to be, like, remembering he's going to have a flashback, and then he's going to be like, James Earl Jones is going to be like, Luke, I am your cousin, and then he's going to re-release every movie in, like, a new format. <laughs> and people are going to be so mad, and Lucas is, no. Lucas is going to be, Lucas is going to be true. just... He's going to be slinging the dick at all the nerds, <laughs> yeah. like, I got you motherfuckers one more time before That's I... impossible! Yes. I got you one more time, now you got to re- you got to revive the whole six movies on Blu-ray to see how this fucks up the continuity, you sons of bitches. <laughs> oh, well, I, I think that probably rounds up the, the movie news. Um, if you want to call it that. I, I don't, the television game has been so fucking strong. Between Gotham and Arrow and The Flash and Constantine. Dominated by DC. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has been better this season, but it's still far, far inferior to the other shows. It's a slow build. Agent Carter looks cool. It's a miniseries, too. It's it's not like it's just an eight episode and that's it. But that looks cool. Yeah, that's really awesome. I guess we can talk about the polls. Yes. Um, well, actually, I guess before we get to that, since there's no back to the long box, we yeah, can have Jeremy talk about his um, Wolverine. And Todd actually does have back to the long box. Back to the long box. I mean, maybe we should probably save the polls for last. What do you think? That's fine. Okay. Well, well, I was talking about this real quick since Black Panther is in the news with his hit new movie coming out. It made me uh, dig up this from uh, the previously Marvel Knights Black Panther series by Christopher Priest, which is. Widely regarded as like the best modern Black Panther incarnation. This one's a hundred page monster, which is a fucking awesome deal for three fifty back in like two thousand one when it came out. And it works like a mini trade paperback. You get a new story, and it just it's a great jumping on point for the Black Panther. And if you wanna read his backstory, it has his first appearance in Fantastic Four, number fifty two and fifty three. And there's another uh Jungle Adventures of Black Panther in there that delves a little deeper into his origin story, but it's just a great, if you can find this anywhere, it's probably cheap as dirt, but it's a, a great intro to Black Panther. The funniest part was uh, when Black Panther is 
relating his origin story to the Fantastic Four, the thing stops him and says his story's boring as shit, and he's heard it in millions of times over watching Jungle movies and Tarzan. And he's like, oh, just cut to the chase, pal. I've seen this story before. Just completely cuts him off. It was a good little thing moment. I ain't got time for this. But yeah, that's... What you telling me your, <laughs> your, your jungle stories for? In the name of my sweet Aunt Petunia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the thing was always the best. Written by Stan Lee. I don't know, you just had that knack for it, man. He's always talking about his baby blue eyes and stuff like that. <laughs> the thing is one of my all time favorite characters. Oh, yeah, I, I really hate that he's kind of been pushed to the the back burner, but that's by Ike the cocksucker pearl mother. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> you really have to read uh you gotta read the Marvel Untold story because Perlmutter, like, he's the one that fucked him up in the first place. Yeah. Then he got to stay on board and sold him to Disney and got, got him a spot on the board of directors, still has his little title. He's the one that's, like, sold him off piece by piece by piece to begin with. Oh, yeah. He still retains the the cock to walk in and be like, you can't make Fantastic Four, you can't create new <laughs> X-Men characters. Yeah, apparently the people at Disney hate him. But there's, like, nothing they can do about it because he got in on the yeah. illegal deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, they think he's just like the most abrasive cocksucker. <laughs> like he's just, just impossible to deal with. Yeah. But, uh, so, Death of Wolverine, huge event. We didn't give it any coverage here on the show as none of us were reading it. I'd kind of pared down my Marvel stuff and certainly. We were didn't mad wanna, at Marvel, so we weren't getting no new books. Yeah, I didn't want to oh. get sucked into a big event, even though Wolverine is. I mean, people shit on Wolverine and say he's overexposed and whatever, but man, Wolverine to me is one of the most interesting characters Marvel ever put out. Um, he's one of my all time favorite Marvel characters. He's got to be in like the top three. Um, I, I mean, he's he's just. Fascinating when done well. Yes. Um, so they've decided here to kill him off. Now we all know in, in comics the deaths aren't permanent by any stretch. What? Never are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, they've had some success with these events in the past with Captain America, Superman, and even some others. Uh, like Spider-Man in the Ultimate Universe, where they've yeah. been able to pull the heartstrings. So oh, yeah. uh, even though you know it, they're not gone forever, you know, but but still it was well written enough to touch you. So, Jeremy, if you will, let us in on what happened in this whole Death of Wolverine deal and what you thought about it. Well, I guess I'll start out with the, uh, you know, they started with the four-part Death of Wolverine where they actually kill him off. Uh, I would say, first off, the art was great in it. Excellent. The writing was good. The first three issues... I thought the pace was well. I really liked it. And then you get to the fourth issue. And the fourth issue, they sort of cram... Oh, they they dropped the ball at the end. Yeah. I mean, they really... They built it up and kept building it up. And then you get to that final issue where they're actually going to kill him off. Uh-huh. And they just they, they just lost it. They just lost it. Because you, you would think a character like Wolverine... I mean, he's the best... You know, the, he's, he's the best he is at what he does. Right, yeah. And it's usually what he does isn't very nice. Well, well in this, you know... I guess I could spoil it since it's released now. Go ahead, yeah. You know, they've been building it up. Somebody is trying to kill off Wolverine, obviously. There's right. a big contract out. Everybody's after him. Um, you know, a lot of his old foes come back. Nuke still comes that, back at one point. He's still in that weakened state, too, where he doesn't oh, yeah. have the healing factor. Right, yeah. He does not, easier to off. does not have the healing factor, which, of course, means that he can't use his you know, old standby adamantium claws. Yeah. So, which it's kind of nice in the last issue. He does get around that because he makes a very cheap set out of what looks like a rebar. And oh, like, wow. It looks like he literally duct taped some rebar on for his quads. Um, it's but, cool. Yeah, they spend all this time building it up and him trying to find out who's out, who's after him. You know, who's, who's got this hit on him. Yeah. Um, you know, they go through. He ends up tracking down at one point uh, Viper and Mad Rapport, who has captured Sabretooth of all people. Uh, Lady Deathstrikes shows up, which is a classic villain. Yeah, it's old. Uh, and then, you know, you get to find, he, you know, he figures out, okay, well, this is where i got to go. Um, you know, it turns out that it's Dr. Cornelius that ah, is the yeah. one that gave him the adamantium to begin with. The original Weapon X Doctor. That's... Yes. So he's after him. Well, you think you're going to show up at his compound, you know, and Wolverine's going to go in, he's going to kick everybody's ass. You know, there's going to be some huge 
brawl with him because that's what he does. And right. it, they just that's not what happens. He shows up at the front door of the place, and there's two guys, and he pretty much says, hey, I'm going to walk in. Yeah. Takes them out, of course, because they're just average Joes. Walks in to find Dr. Cornelius, and what he's doing is he's trying to recreate the Weapon X program. They have this big, long banter back and forth about how he picked Wolverine, and the mistake was that Wolverine was like an animal. So now he's trying to correct it and make another a new super soldier that's more programmed and easy to deal with. Yeah. Well, you know, Wolverine's like, no, I'm not going to let this happen. Uh, they have uh, one of the first, I guess, of the new creations of Dr. Cornelius try to take him down in a very pathetic fight scene that's like maybe all of a page, maybe yeah. two. Uh, <laughs> so he, he takes him down. And then they end up, Dr. Cornelius is like, no, I'm still going to do this. He activates the computer stuff to start all the machines to start creating the next yeah. or another Weapon X. X. And at that point, Wolverine is, apparently goes through and has a epiphany in his mind, and he goes, I'm not going to allow this. Pops the adamantium cloth, blood oh. goes everywhere, of course. Nice. He goes up to the adamantium tank and, of course, slices it open. Adamantium pours out all over him. <laughs> which, not having his healing factor, you would think would have instantly killed I mean, right, you know, yeah. would have killed him. But no, it doesn't. He manages to follow Dr. Cornelius to the roof. Finds him there. He's try- Dr. Cornelius is trying to escape. Well, he can't escape because during the big tussle with the... Uh, I think it was Sharp was the last name. Yeah. He gets impaled in the st- in the gut with a pe- with some glass. So oh. he's like laying there dying. Uh-huh. And he has this big speech about what have you ever done? What have you ever done? You've done nothing. You get two or three panels of like Logan memories. And then Logan goes, I've done enough. Walks to the edge of, I guess it's like a, a, a dam or something yeah. therein. Drops on his knees and the adamantium hardens. And it's just him sitting there with the cloth tail out staring off into the sun. Fizzles out. Which is, I mean, which is a cool ending, man. Yeah. I read it, and yeah. thought, you know, it was well done, the artwork. But you would think that they so would got Han Solo. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> which you know, which is going to leave you right there. It's like, well, he's encased in adamantium now. You know, what are they going to do? Are yeah, they going to like, smartest minds of the universe? And then somebody's going to figure out, like Beast, or somebody's going to figure out how to do right. the science to get him out of the adamantium. <laughs> yeah, you're, right. you're welcome, Charles Soul. Just wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> so you know it. It, it was bittersweet, I guess. There were good parts and bad parts. And then the part that's going to get you at the end, which is what Marvel is very good at, as we've talked about, is they start having Death of Wolverine everywhere. So oh, if you yeah. want to keep up with it, now you've got to buy yeah, a whole like bunch Spiral of books. Other miniseries. Um, so far, you know, I've been checking out the It's like the Logan. Death of Wolverine, Howard the Duck. Yeah. yeah. It's like, how does he tie <laughs> Yeah. Well, now they've got the, the Logan legacy as one yeah, of the Death I've of heard Wolverine. Of this. And I've, there's four issues so far. I've read three of them. Somehow I missed one. I think it was when somebody was on vacation at B&M and I didn't get my poll correct that week or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, it's pretty much, it's, it takes... Is that, each, the, is that the series that's the uh, disciples of Scott Snyder writing each issue? Um, I'm not exactly... You get like a team. I've only got the one. Yeah, with Marguerite Bennett. Yeah, Marguerite Bennett, yeah. yeah, it is. That is, that's the, the all-Batman Wolverine writing yeah, right. team. Yeah. Um, I mean, pretty. You know, all they're doing in that is that, like each issue they look at one of his villains. Oh, you know, one of his ancient. You know, his hardcore. You know, long time. You know, uh, what nemesis? Nemesis. Uh, like this one, number four. It's got Lady Deathstrike in it, right? Well, it, pretty much in every issue, the same thing happens. Is they go, Wolverine is dead. I didn't get to kill him. Now I'm like screwed up about it. Oh shit! <laughs> so you know, like this newest one with her in it, she's of course mad because she didn't get to kill him. There's one, of course, there's an earlier one with Sabretooth. He's mad. He didn't get to kill him. Yeah. And, you know, it's sort of, I don't know. I would rather have seen them take part in the death of Wolverine more so than come up with this stuff at the end where you've yeah. got to buy a bunch of issues. So they've got that. That's another one, the Logan Legacy. Then they have the Weapon X program, Death of Wolverine. Yeah. Uh, I've checked the first one out. I don't know if the second one is out yet. But it starts out at the compound where... Wolverine dies at Dr. Cornelius' compound or whatever. And the, I guess, character list in it are the people that he was experimenting on. And one of them is the, uh, I don't want to call it, I think it's Captain Sharp is what his name is. Yeah. Or they call him, when he, he's the one that Wolverine fights in Death Row. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah. Well, he is there. They go through, the, he gets a group of the, uh, I guess, the new Weapon X people that Dr. Cornelius was manipulating. And they're trying to escape. A team has come in to eliminate them. 
I don't know. I'm not sure what that's about yet. Yeah. Well, long story short, you get to the end of the Weapon X program, and then they drop a bomb on you. That Captain Sharp takes off his mask, and he looks exactly like Logan. He has the hair, the huh. sideburns. It looks like he's a freaking clone or something. Like replacement. Wolf. So that's it's like, <laughs> what are we doing here? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's interesting. So I don't know where they're going with with that, to be so honest about it. Sabretooth was going to end up being Wolverine before it was said and done, so who the fuck knows? Yeah, I mean, I'm... They got his clone, female clone running around still with the... Yeah, X twenty three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. which is a very cool character, but yeah. still, it's like, I, yeah, it very. It doesn't seem like it was very final. You know, it was just like it seems like it was very yeah. much like, oh, we're gonna try to sell some books and then trail off into this extra story. I mean, I don't know. I guess it'll just loop back around eventually. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's up. like they could have had all these more yeah. things. They could have had like they could have had him die, and they could have had a great issue where they all mourn him, where like see yeah. like Cyclops cry, even though they, they had all their problems and. Uh, they Stuff do like that have, could happen. There's another book. I didn't bring it with me, which is the third title. Um, it's Life After Logan, yeah. and actually, that's <laughs> what they do. Is it's the first? I think it's the first issue, second first issue, maybe second issue. Yeah. But it's Cyclops thinking about and reminiscing about how he misses Wolverine now that he's dead. A lot of weeping and reminiscing. Yes. Like that, <laughs> they, they did a really good job with that stuff after Captain America died. There was a whole miniseries called Fallen Sun that had, like, you know, how Cap's death affected each person individually. Mm-hmm. The best one was, was the Punisher, by the way. But, yeah, just, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would, would uh, be interested to see more of that and mm-hmm. less of the... I would be interested in more of seeing, like, for a character like that where it could be contained, like, if you do that story, then you can just do it in the Wolverine book, and the next issue, if you're getting it monthly, is just where they're all reminiscing and stuff, where you don't have to, like go online and, like, try to cross-reference yeah. what you actually need to be reading. Like, in the old days, it's like, you know, year one happened in Batman. And yeah. you just got yeah. to read more Batman. Or Robin died in Batman. Now, Robin's coming back. There's a whole mini-series about it. And then you got to read Batman and Robin. Yeah. You try to see it back, whatever. Back then, it's just, it just happened on the monthly, and you didn't have to, you know, get a degree in the comic <laughs> yeah. research well, to figure know, out what's your, happening. Into your bank account. So yeah, now they exactly. also, you know, they did have at the same time. I remember they had an issue of Storm. The Storm's got her own book now. Yeah. A Death of Wolverine issue where, of course, mm-hmm. she's, I think they, they might have actually done two issues. Yeah, they were dating when, uh, when he died. But, of course, you know, that kind of goes through her process of dealing with yeah. the loss of him. Yeah. It's like a loose uh, time. So, I mean, there's, I guess I'll sum it up by saying there was some good and there was some not so good. Marvel is doing their usual thing where they want you to buy a million books. Oh, yeah. And of course, being a fanboy, I'm going to buy every freaking one of them because that's just, I mean, it's like Todd and Spider Man. It yeah. could be awful and he's going to buy it. Yeah. Same I understand, kind of thing. yeah. I, I had to drop Spider Man finally. It happened. Oh, yeah. Been that way with many X Men tie ins in the past. Uh, you yeah. know, it just, We've it's all hard to. had our experiences. Hey, man. To me, it was before <laughs> Watchmen. I bought every single one of them. Yeah. It happened. <laughs> well, get your polls 100th episode. Let's get to some polls. They bring a new format with the 100th episode moving forward. We're not going to go through each individual issue like we have been. Right. Uh, we, that probably is not the best for discussion and all that. Um, but what we are going to do, we kind of narrowed it down to the highlights. And we're going to all do one pick of the week for the show, which encompasses the last three weeks of comics. Um, but also, we will talk about the contenders for that pick and okay. um, give a couple sentences just about... Each of those issues, but just very short and sweet. The big one pick of the week that we're going to go into in detail. The great Muji, our fearless leader. You want to start us off? Let's do it. I had a bunch of really good books. They were all awesome, but I narrowed them down. Uh, Batman number 36 was badass. You know, we're going to talk about it more in a minute. Um, Lazarus is really picking up. It's issue 12 of it. It was really, really, really good. Uh, Witches, issue number two. Snyder and Jock. Once again, awesome. Um, Jock is, it's like the best horror drawing. Like the way, like his style of like art, like automatically makes like every page sketchy. So yeah. it's really badass. I mean, if you remember like the Black Mirror, how like creepy it was, the Joker was in it. It's like that only now he's drawing a book that's supposed to just be scary. So yeah. Which is, really I've loved, man. It, it has been like just the one issue is like that something different. It was great. And you already know Snyder's really good. He writes them, like, the way that, like, he understands, like, the comic form. Like, have you ever read Severed? 
all the scares and scaver and severed happened like when you flipped a page like yeah, you didn't yeah. lose something in a random panel because you're reading and then to the side you're like oh shit somebody's getting their neck sliced you know i can see it like it was always on a page flip that's how witches is too like all the creepy stuff is always like right when you turn the page and like the first panel so it's it's Very well laid out. It's hard to do a scare like that in a comic, but it's good to yeah. see. Yeah, it's, it's hard to do, but <laughs> only if you can do it, yeah. The Fade Out, Brubaker, Sean Phillips, you can imagine that it's great. And then um, I switched it up, but I started my pick of the week. It's going to be Outcast, um, issue five already. Wow, really? Kirkman and as they cut it, yeah, Kirkman keeps up on his shit. Like, he's, his books don't usually get behind, so... Um, but it's been really awesome so far. This is in the first part of the story. Um, it's really great because they actually try to do like a full exorcism. They go into a prison and try to do an exorcism, and they learn that there's like more evil around than they thought because they, they're not able to do it. Apparently, this dude's never failed in exorcising somebody, and he can't do it on this guy. And then they're trying to figure out what the hell happened, like, why, you know, what's going on. And then, um, and then you also see in the background, which is one of my favorite things about the book, is there's this really creepy priest-looking guy that's like following around watching him. He's just got to be a bad guy. He's got to be. Oh man, I that I love that book. Um, I, I think you know everybody was kind of apprehensive about Robert Kirkman's next horror. Like, was it going to live up to The Walking Dead? I mean, people in Hollywood weren't apprehensive about it because they snatched it right up knowing it was going to be a hot property, but, you know, the quality, I think, was really the question. And I think after reading, and I haven't read that, which rounds out the first trade, but I I think there's no question on the quality. Yeah, it's really badass. Like, it's, yeah, it's arguably just as good as the first, like, five issues of Walking Dead. It's really, really, really good. Like, you instantly like, like, all the characters that they've introduced and everything. And there's a real creep factor going on, too. It's awesome that, while horror movies are been pretty chat as of late, that there's they've got some really good horror comics to at least like fill that void. Absolutely, motherfucking lootly. Uh, well, do you want me to go second? I guess I will be happy to. Had several, several tough contenders um, over several weeks here. There's been some really good stuff, but really, what stuck out to me one was Sons of Anarchy number fourteen. Um, they really are bringing the goods with this book, and you don't really expect that from a tie-in for a, a TV show that's oftentimes looked as just a merchandising tripe, you know. But um, they really did fan service, and uh, they upped the violence and sex and the language up to an R-rated level where the TV show can only go to, like, in between PG-13 and yeah. an R, you know. So it's like, um, it's even more brutal. It's great. The Flash, um, this whole war with the future Flash and the present Flash really comes to a head in this issue. The big battle is awesome. Um, Southern Bastards from Image Comics is just one of the best books out there. One of the most different. It takes place in Alabama. It's about corrupt officials running a small southern town and how football is God and there's murder and scandal and it rules. It's just one of the best. Uh, I always hear people talking about that. The comic store when I go in. It's probably mostly Tyler, but like <laughs> I always hear a discussion going on about either just Jason Aaron or that specific Southern Bastards. Oh, it, it is. Awesome. Yeah, it's something else. You really need to check it out. I'll, I'll let you borrow the first few. Although my number one is signed by Jason Latour, okay. so it has to be treated with, <laughs> with the. <laughs> I'll wait for the trade off. Show some respect. <laughs> extreme care. <laughs> And then uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, they're wrapping up that issue of the backstory of what happened to Richard Ryder in Nova and how he died and Peter Quill and uh, Drax coming back and surviving after being presumed dead. And that was pretty cool. But my pick of the week, uh, well, actually, can't can't miss on Batman Eternal either. Um, they, they just wrapped up a huge arc. It's the weekly Batman book, and it's just fucking awesome. Um, you know, really... They, they aren't has dipped in quality a time or two is the only thing I would say when they're probably rushing to get it out, but the story has not. And certainly like 98% of the time, the art's amazing. So it gets the highest recommendation possible, but as good as it was, it was not walking dead. One thirty four. Yeah. Holy <laughs> fucking shit. We've, we've, uh, we've in the walking dead universe. I know you guys probably aren't caught up. So, uh, but yeah. you've already heard many spoilers from the show. So, um, yeah. you plug your ears if you don't want to hear these, but you're, if you're good, then I'm going to proceed. Jeremy, 
Um, I, think, I think I'll live. I think you're the only, <laughs> only one I wasn't sure about. So, so right now, uh, of course, they're in the Walking Dead universe. They've, they've established various communities um, that trade with each other. The war with the horrible villain Negan is over. And they did a big time jump like two years into the future. It's un- They haven't disclosed it, but estimated to be about two years. Yeah. And um, right now, the community is just working together, and, and it's it's going well, but you're starting to see these new threats creep in on the horizon. Um, one of these, they've actually given a name to these people. They're called the Whisperers, and we very know very little about them. Um, but they're people that make suits out of zombie skin, and they wear them around. Oh, and so yeah. they walk like walkers. They come up on people, and then they start whispering to them, and they think the fucking dead are talking to them. And then, of course, they pull out their fucking knives and gang-stab the motherfuckers. Oh, it's like, yeah. <laughs> and so some of Rick's crew got up on him. Jesus, who's just, they call him Jesus because he looks like Jesus. <laughs> He's a gay dude that lives there. He's a fucking badass, though. And he fucking, um, he has it out with the whispers in this issue, and fucking, it's goddamn awesome. He, he's got Michonne's katana, it looks like, actually, and fucking really took those fuckers to school. And then um, in, in another part of the issue, which is just, like, Carl is becoming one of the most badass characters in the whole book, despite yeah. his teenage uh, ultimate hipster look now, where he's got, like, a fucking puka shell necklace and some sweet bangs covering his fucking <laughs> missing eye. Yeah. And, fucking, yeah. <laughs> and Sophia, of course, is still alive in the comics. Yeah. And um, they've always kind of, you know, had that playful a puppy love thing going on. Uh, but now they're back together. They've been separated for many years. And they're living on the same community. And uh, they're trying to rekindle a relationship with these two fuckers that are jealous of Carl, of course, because he's the new big man on campus in the community. Son of Rick Grimes, most famous man in the apocalypse. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Carl fucking uh, gets busted in the back of the head with a brick by these motherfuckers, and they try to fucking like double team and fucking beat up and rape Sophia, and fucking Carl shakes off that motherfucking brick and goes and gets himself a fucking shovel and caves those two bitches' heads yeah. in. Fucking right there in front of her, and god damn it, I mean, like, Carl just is fucking ruthless. He He's shown, like, from the war with Negan, where they did the shit where Rick planted him in the cargo truck that they were sending to fucking Negan, and he had a fucking AK-47 when the fucking cargo truck opened up. Carl fucking opens fire on all the motherfuckers. I mean, he's really becoming awesome. Yeah, it was really badass. Yeah, the episode ends with him, like, walking up, because they're in, like... Maggie's the place that Maggie's in charge of now. And he shows him like walking. He like walks up to her and he's like, "Hey, I think I killed two kids." And then it ends. <laughs> he really went psycho on him, and it was badass. Yeah, yeah. Carl Grimes, don't take no motherfucking shit off of nobody. Apparently not. And what are kids in the apocalypse doing to send a message? He didn't. They didn't just walk up and like punch him. They hit him with a fucking brick. Yeah. What the fuck is that? <laughs> like, let's go bully this kid. Let's yeah. hit him with a brick in the oh, back of the head. Yeah, this kid that's fucking killed probably like fifty grown men by this <laughs> point. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they learned very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, totally worthy of pick of the week. Um, amazing that Walking Dead still keeps the quality that it does in the comics. It could easily slack off because of the popularity of the TV show, but it's completely. Um, similar but different as it always has been and always is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Todd Rope? I will chip in with my couple of polls here. Miracle Man, it's always a pleasure to read here. Uh, I think number 13 is out by now. It's a series that a lot of people know about. Of course, I'm reading most of it with a fresh set of eyes, so that's probably the best way to read it. It's just one of those things that's been out of print for a long time, so you can find it, check it out. It's constantly one of the best comics on the shelves for me. It does help not having read it before. Hopefully they'll take it yeah. in a direction. And they're doing an annual of uh, old Grant Morrison's story that was never published. So that'll be pretty cool. And it kind of was meant to occur like in the series when it will be released. Second choice would probably be Multiversity. They're on uh, The Just. It's just a... So far, it's just been a series of one-shots for the most part. 
There's uh, the main multiverse the line. There's going to be a couple issues of that. But it's just a cool little way to do a big event without having it step on anything. And the regular DC 52 proper were just hitting here and there in different multiverses. And they're trying to. Oh, it was fantastic. I, I haven't read a lot of recent Graham Morrison that really blew me away. Yeah. I think he's maybe not, you know, not, a lot of people have loved it, but I think he's maybe been on a bit of a dry creative spell. Yeah. Not with that multiversity, man. It, it really sucked me in from the beginning, and when you don't know any of the characters in a book, you know it's good when yeah. immediately it's like, it, it, it's this thing where it, like, involves you, where you're, like, almost <laughs> existing within the comic and fucking... Yeah. It's a mind trip, but it's really well done, and the, like all the shout outs are cool when they go and converge in this big you area. Need a manual to tell which what each reference is because I don't know a lot of these. Things, yeah, but there's so much in there. There is. They go in there. There's like these. They're supposed to be like the Avengers, you know. Like there's right. this, like all these multi. They get sucked into this multiversal portal where like all these different people from multiverses are getting stuck. And there's a Dino Cop, which is like clearly yeah. Savage Dragon, really like fucking, you know, all these other characters from other other lines that they really did a nice shout out there. It was really cool. It's really well done. It's really disjointed, like a lot of his stuff. But he really has a good overarching story that he's trying to tell, and I'm really just curious as to how it's going to wrap up. It's always, you know, a surprise, which is good. My pick of the week would be the Amazing Spider Man. This is actually from last week, but whatever. Uh, it's a <laughs> pick of the last three weeks. Yeah. It's my pick just because it's the way they're doing Spider Verse is almost like a choose your own adventure kind of style. Like, you don't have to get everything because all of the main plot points, from what I understand, are happening in Amazing Spider Man. So you could just read that and get a good full story. And of course, they're using one of my favorite uh, villains that was created in the uh, like 2000s. Straczynski, Romita Jr. run, Morland's mm-hmm. come back, and now he has a whole host of other like psychic vampires that are his family, the Inheritors. So they are banding together and just sucking all the energy out of the Spider-Man from the, of, all the mur- multiverse. So I'm doing a lot of multiverse spanning stories here. Dan Slott's still on that, huh? He's still on it, and he's killing it, man. Like uh, all the, uh, I've only picked up a few of the Edge, Edge of Spider-Verse die. books that were leading up to this, but they've all been phenomenal, and he's picking really good artists or whoever's in charge of that. It's just, it's really great, and it ends up where you find out that one of the multiverse Spider-Men still has the, uh, I can't remember the name of the power, the power cosmic, like the cosmic Spider-Man power. So he's able to house all of those Spider-Men in his dimension to protect them, because he knows if the Inheritors show up, he can just completely blink them out of existence if he felt like it. He doesn't know. They're still trying to get all the spiders together. And I think the next issue, the big thing, is going to be Peter confronting, you know, Doc Ock in his own body the same, in, the same, uh, in the same universe. So that's, that's kind of cool to look forward to. And I'm psyched about it. What did you, I was going to say, I read that one, uh, too. What did you think about the reference, I think, to the host and the bride? Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah what's up with, what are your the, thoughts well, on the, that? They talked about the other. Like, or the other. It was another uh, host. I don't know where I got that. Another Moreland story from like shortly after this Krasinski run. Or he may have been one of the main writers on that. <laughs> but uh, the other is like uh, another spider totem that has different super abilities. And that is currently the other is the Scarlet Spider, mm. who is Kane from the Clone Saga, right. the imperfect clone. They saved his ass. But, yeah, as far as the bride, I guess that could be Silk, Silk because yeah. she is tied into Moreland because she was in captivity to prevent Moreland from showing up. So, huh, she's probably the bride, the bride. As far as the host, I don't know. It could be Peter. Like, it might have something to do with the symbiote or something. That would be pretty badass. I'd like to see Flash Thompson lose the symbiote, personally. Yeah. <laughs> Get Andy Brock back in there. Everybody loved Andy Brock. Missed. I like right. the Flash Thompson Venom. I, I okay. it. They, they probably have ran its course with it, but it it, it has it's been a good story. It's the freshest Venom they've had, other than Eddie Brock. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, and the Matt Gargan Venom wasn't too bad either. He was bad. more of a hateable Venom. Like he, he was yeah, like yeah, Eddie yeah. Brock was always kind of had a tragic side to him, and Matt Gargan was just a total dick. He's the 
slow. He just yeah. happened to get the symbiote. <laughs> and he's such a gluttonous fuck that, you know, it was very dangerous for him to have the symbiote because oh, yeah. he was just eating everybody in sight. <laughs> There, there was, was a great movie cool series one time where Mac Gargan Venom left a fucking dead hooker in J. John Jameson's bed. Oh my God. <laughs> and it caused a huge <laughs> scandal. <laughs> Yikes. It always does. That's a party foul right there. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Todd, that that do it for you there? That does it for me, yeah. All right, Jeremy. Uh, well, yeah, I've a, <clears throat> the past few weeks I've been reading a lot of... Uh, a lot of back issues ever since B&M had their big sale. I went in and stuck it to Buddy that day. So. And scooped them up. <laughs> yeah, I went in and, and grabbed quite a bit of things. Um, but there were some new things I got that I enjoyed. Um, you had mentioned the new Batman. Uh, that was great. Loved it. Uh, Batman Eternal was also, those two books have been very um, impressive to me so far. I also have been picking up the five uh, issue uh, Dark Tower uh, that they've been putting oh, yeah, out. Yeah, they're doing book two. Uh, like yeah. You. Yeah, uh, and I've, I've enjoyed those so far. They have managed to steer clear of... They, they Well, not steer clear, but they've managed to enforce some of the things that happened in the book without stepping all over it. Yeah. You know, yeah. so um, cool. I, I enjoyed them. I'm a tower junkie, so you got to love that. Also, I picked up the new Constantine. I'm still on the fence about it, you know. I didn't really, didn't really know a lot about the character. Um, so I'm... Trying to figure out what's going on. I, th- I saw, you know, they got the new show coming out, so I thought I would check it out. And I remember reading Sandman the other day. They taught me more. Yeah, yeah, I was about to so say, Sandman's be- probably a better introduction to Constantine than the new series. I What I read of has not been bad, but it's not blown me away either. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it gets the character, but not all of what makes him special. But Is it Ray Fox that writes it? Yes. I don't love it. Yeah, he's not. He doesn't really do it for me. You don't really speak well, to me. I, I'm, that's one of those that I'm probably going to pick it up for another couple of issues just to see where it goes, yeah. and then yeah. it will probably be next. But it's not awful. I mean, I picked up an issue of Carnage Number One. I think they're doing that. Yeah. Uh, it's part of that six sixes. Yeah. Is that what is it? It's how many back into the X's How many back issues did you get, buddy? For work? oh good lord, I think I ended up. Uh, I had a stack that was. Well, let me put it to you this way: there were fifty. 50% off, and I managed to drop a, you know, a $100 bill like nobody's business. Yeah. So, nice. uh, so, yeah, I, I so, totally stuck it to Buddy that day. Uh, I'm sure he appreciates it. Yeah, I'm sure he hey, Yeah, hey, it's business, man. He, he was happy about that, right? But, you know, those were the, the newer ones that I, you know, that we were talking about. See, I think Batman was probably the one, I think, probably was the primary one that I enjoyed the most. I saved that one for a good long bathroom. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at that page over there. Right. It's the Joker, right and it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No two face, no face Joker. Yeah. <laughs> the Joker. So yeah, it, um, yeah, Batman. I think if you haven't checked it out, you need to go pick it up because wow. Yeah, they're doing that whole story. I haven't read this most recent issue, but I have read the issues <laughs> leading up to it. And <laughs> of course, um, we're doing the whole deal where the Joker has somehow gotten to the Justice League. And yeah, that first the thirty five was phenomenal. It yeah. was great. Yeah. I mean, you can tell by the cover that the, this most recent one is going to be awesome. I mean, yeah. you can't beat that. I mean, the Joker, you got Superman, the yeah. Superman, the Joker. I mean, come on, <laughs> with blood dripping <laughs> yeah. from his fists. Yeah. Yeah. Kapoor yeah. really has it in here for those covers, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. he always grabbed it. Great. Pulo's probably, probably one of my Each best. Each month, I'd be like, I'm right. picking it up now. Yeah. Pulo's probably one of my best or my most favorite artists. Oh yeah, most favorite, most favorite artist. I guess he's great. Love him. Loved him since Spawn. Oh, I didn't pick up the new Spawn. There is the big countdown to the return of Al Simmons. 250. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. I've been kind of on the fence about the past few issues here of Spawn. So hopefully when Al Simmons comes back, it's going to change things up. I think they're rearrang- cleaning some house and rearranging some things there. So, so they were taking it in a weird, different direction. Yeah. So I guess they're kind of returning back to the well. That's what people want to see with that well. character, I think. Yeah, but... But I mean, you know, yet again, Batman rounds out the show, and uh, that's no surprise here. If you followed the program, Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo's Batman run has been just, it, when it's all said and done, it will be right up there with Morrison and Miller and, and all of the other greats. And it's really exciting to be alive and just experiencing it as it happens. You know, you don't always get to get in on those things while they're going on. Um, sometimes you don't necessarily appreciate the good old days until they're gone, you know? Like, But in this case, it's like you see the greatness right there in front of you and you appreciate
appreciate it every month. And you just pray the greatness keeps going and that Scott Waddell doesn't get to take over. Oh, dear God, Waddell. don't even tell me that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, mean, I know they, they've said that they've committed to about issue 50 at least. So, and I, I It's another year. It's another year by then. Hope they stick around longer. But, I mean, that's a huge run. 50 issues is almost unprecedented in the modern comic era yeah. for a one yeah, nobody does that. single writer. Well, especially not not just one writer, not to mention a whole creative team. So it's really awesome. I think they're the last ones left because the great run of Azarello and Chain ended on Wonder Woman last month. Which reading that trade, so still got six issues of that left to read. You know, a couple months. Man, Paul and Butzoletto on on Detective is pretty damn awesome. They went a while, yeah, but I think that leaves. I think this is it, isn't it? From the original. The original 52 relaunch. Uh, I think this yes, is the only team yes. that's left. Everything else is I mean, John's is still writing done. Justice League, but he's had a billion different artists. This is the only the only team that's left on a book. Yeah. That's impressive as fuck. Well, maybe that's really? why Batman's always number one. I mean, if people can bitch about Batman and say, oh, there's too much Batman, he's overexposed. As long as they're delivering quality, there's never enough Batman. Yeah, there's there's fucking never there's never too much sex, there's never too many drugs, <laughs> there's never too much beer, there's never too much Batman. You get your point. 